Welcome to Between the Signals, a podcast brought to you by the UK Dementia Research Institute at King's College London. As our population gets older, dementia has become a major health challenge. If nothing changes, half of us could be affected by dementia in some way, either facing it ourselves, caring for a loved one, or both. What is a neurodegenerative condition? How might these conditions affect us and our future as we age? These are exactly the kinds of topics that we're breaking down on this podcast, and we hope you enjoy. This podcast is brought to you by the UK Dementia Research Institute at King's College London. My name is Dr. Asma Bashir, and I'm a public engagement manager here at King's, and I also have a background in neuroscience, specifically in neurotrauma and neurodegeneration. I would love to introduce you to my co-host for the day, Dr. Sarah Mizelenska, who is a group leader here at the UK DRI, and she and I will be speaking to Dr. Sarah Marzi today, who's also a group leader at the DRI, whose research focuses on understanding how epigenetics regulate biological mechanisms in health and disease. So let's start off. Sarah, would you mind introducing yourself? No, oh, hi. I'm um, Dr. Sarah Mizelinska. Um, my uh, research group focuses on how molecules move around the cells and how this, this becomes dysfunctional, in particularly in motor neuron disease and frontotemporal dementia. Over to you, Sarah. Hi, I'm also Sarah, Dr. Sarah Marzi, <laughs> and my group works on epigenetics with a particular aim to understand how environmental risk factors and our genetics uh, can cause neurodegenerative conditions. Mm -hmm. And today our conversation focuses on neurodegeneration. It's a really broad term that I would love for you to describe in more detail. It is, and it encompasses quite a wide range of conditions. So um, the name basically uh, is the secret to what it means. Neurodegeneration means neurons die. Uh, so neurons are the nerve cells that we have both in our brains and in our spinal cords. And what all the neurodegenerative conditions have in common is that neurons die. Uh, and then this can happen in very different parts of the brain or in the spinal cord, and it can affect very different neurons. And dependent on what the normal function of these neurons is, you get very different symptoms. So these could be more cognitive symptoms uh, or more motor symptoms, as in conditions like ALS and motor neuron disease. Yeah, so you touched upon that. And what um, conditions are classified as neurodegeneration? So um, on the one hand, uh, you have more the dementia accompanied uh, conditions like Alzheimer's disease, for example, which would be the most common one. Um, you can get different forms of dementias as well, though, like frontotemporal dementia, Lewy body disease. And at the other end of the spectrum, you have conditions that affect your motor system uh, and function a bit more. And these would be things like ALS and motor neuron disease, but also Parkinson's, um, which in different ways can affect how you move your body and how you control your muscles. And what is it that we mean by cognitive function? It's a term that I've seen a lot in my research and also my readings. What does it mean when we say that? Basically, it means all the mental processes by which we think and we learn and we understand things. So that encompasses things like building new memories, learning new facts or skills. Um, it's also our control of language, um, our uh, Executive functions is another sort of umbrella term for different things that regulate um, how we manage ourselves. So regulation of emotion, orientation, complex problem solving, basically these kinds of things. And all of them together will be described as cognitive function. Uh, and that's quite often affected in neurodegenerative conditions uh, that affect those areas of your brain that control these functions. Okay, so... What is the specific difference between conditions like motor neuron disease and dementias like Alzheimer's disease? Right. So these diseases affect very different parts of our nervous system, of the brain and the spinal cord. Motor neuron disease uh, affects neurons that are called motor neurons. And these are the neurons that innervate all the muscles in our body. So when they die, we lose control of those muscles and of all the functions that they fulfill. This, this can be uh, controlling your tongue and speech, for example, uh, controlling how you walk and you move. Um, but as the disease progresses, it can even affect things like breathing. 
Alzheimer's disease and other dementias often affect parts of your brain that control these cognitive functions that we uh, talked about. So in Alzheimer's, for example, the disease starts out in an area of your brain that is responsible for building new memories, which is why this short-term memory loss and this forgetfulness of remembering things that have happened to you on the same day, for example, that's one of the first symptoms that you will see in Alzheimer's disease. And then as it progresses to other regions of the brain, more and more functions get affected. So um, what is quite common as well is loss of orientation, getting lost as you're navigating uh, your way to your house or to work or to somewhere else. Um, but it can progress even into areas of your brain that control vision. And so then you'll get visual impairments, for example, having problems in seeing visual depth, what is close to you, what is far away. Okay, so if I suddenly become forgetful, does that mean I have dementia? Absolutely not. There are many, many reasons why people might be forgetful, and it's a common part of life. For example, if you had a really bad night's sleep, or you've been ill for another reason, or you've been really stressed. So all these things could mean that you're becoming more forgetful. Um, forgetfulness is also a natural part of aging to a degree. As we get older, we do become a little bit more forgetful. Um, neurodegenerative conditions generally lead to these really sustained periods of these symptoms happening. Uh, and they're also very severe. So they really have a, an impact on your daily life and um, they make it more difficult to function in your normal life. In addition to talking about MND and Alzheimer's disease, could you talk a little bit about Parkinson's? Of course. And actually, that's something uh, my research group works on as well. So I'd be delighted to talk more about it. Parkinson's uh, affects a type of neuron called dopaminergic neurons. So that's a neurotransmitter, basically a signaling molecule in your brain. And these neurons use this particular signaling molecule. And it affects an area of our brain called the midbrain. So that sits very, very deep in our brain. Um, and it also is um, responsible for controlling some of our motor functions. So in Parkinson's, you very often um, get like a tremor. So where people tremble a little bit um, and they can't hold their hand still, you get problems in walking, posture and gait. And so are they the earliest symptoms that people that people with Parkinson's display? They're the most commonly known symptoms. And so um, when you hear about Parkinson's in the media, that's often what's talked about. But actually, there are some symptoms that occur potentially decades before this. And these can involve your digestive system. So becoming constipated, for example, can occur decades before you actually get Parkinson's disease. Um, but they can also revolve around um, certain sleep uh, changes and abnormalities and difficulties in sleep as well. Could we switch gears ever so slightly and talk more broadly about the work that you're doing in your research group to explore neurodegeneration? Sure. Um, so my group works on something called epigenetics, mm -hmm. and that's how our cells regulate what genes they express. So basically every cell in our body has exactly the same DNA, and that encodes a whole repertoire of different genes that make proteins um, and that the cells use to function. Um, but we have very, very different cell types in our body. Neurons is one that we've talked about a lot in this episode. Uh, we also have skin cells. Uh, we have muscle cells. So in each of these cells are very, very specified. So they need to use a very different set of genes and proteins to fulfill their functions. And basically the instructions for what genes to make are encoded through biochemical mechanisms that we call epigenetics. So these are things that are on or around the DNA and that tell it which proteins to produce. And we study this in the context of neurodegenerative conditions because we want to understand um, how some of the genetic risk factors that are associated with diseases, so variants that have been identified uh, that increase your risk for the disease, how they do this, what do they change in the relevant cells that make them vulnerable to the disease. Uh, and we're also interested in environmental factors. So these can be all sorts of different things. In Parkinson's, for example, agricultural pesticides, so things that are used in farming, uh, are quite strongly associated with an increased risk of Parkinson's. But we don't understand why and what the mechanism of that is. And so we look at these epigenetic pain patterns in cells exposed to pesticides or other environmental risk factors to understand how they're being predisposed to conditions like Parkinson's. And so 
How about in the UK DRI more broadly? Well, the UK DRI um, is a very large research institution uh, with research group featuring um, the whole spectrum of different biological and epidemiological um, and clinical research questions across neurodegenerative conditions. Um, at the more basic biological level, um, you have people that look at genetics, for example, genetic variants associated with diseases. You have people that look at, at proteins. One of the things that we see in a lot of neurodegenerative conditions is that proteins sort of clump uh, and form these um, aggregates, as we call them. So we have a lot of groups working on how this happens, why some proteins build these clumps, um, how these clumps might be cleared up, uh, and why that is going wrong in diseases, for example. And then one other really big theme, and that is actually something that is shared across different conditions, is the role of the immune system and the immune cells that surround our neurons and how they might sometimes protect the neurons and help with some of these um, clearing up and healthy functions, but how they can sometimes go into states that are not very good for the neurons and um, that have a lot of inflammation uh, and that might be toxic in the long run for the neurons. Okay, so you seem to be implying that there's a lot of shared features between these conditions. That's exactly right. So even though very different cells and areas of our brain and our nervous system are affected, some of the things that are happening in the cells and in the conditions are very similar. So that includes these protein clumps that I talked about, the role of the immune system, but various other biological processes in the neurons that are dying and in the cells around them as well. And so therefore we think it's really important that we study all of these conditions um, across the board in the UK Dementia Research Institute um, and that we communicate between research that goes on in different conditions because we can learn so many things from one condition to another. I did notice that throughout our conversation we've been using a lot of terminology and I wonder if we could describe it in a little bit more detail. Um, for instance, neurodegeneration versus dementia. Is there a difference and if so, what is that difference? Yes, this is a great question and it's one that I get quite often from my friends actually. <laughs> um, or often it could also be what's the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm. So dementia stands for the clinical and the cognitive symptoms that you experience as you have these diseases. And dementia is caused by neurodegenerative diseases, of which there are many different types, and we've discussed some of them today. The most common one being Alzheimer's disease. So uh, Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. And can you guide our audience to where they can find out a bit more about these conditions? There's actually a lot of really useful information on the UK DRI website. So if you search in the conditions uh, tab of the website, um, there's lots of information about the conditions themselves. There are lots of links to different charities that do some amazing work in the field. Uh, but obviously, if anyone is experiencing any symptoms and is unsure about what's going on, you should always talk to your GP first. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that advice. And thank you for sharing your work today with us. And thank you to my co-host, Dr. Mizalinska, for your time as well. To quickly summarize what we've discussed here today, when we say neurodegeneration, we're referring to an incurable and debilitating condition that results from the progressive death of nerve cells. And many of these neurodegenerative conditions are currently being researched at the UK DRI in the hopes of understanding more about these conditions and hopefully one day exploring possibilities for treatment and effective cure as well. If you like this episode, be sure to engage with us on YouTube and on our social media pages. The links are in the description box below. You'll also be able to learn more about this work by visiting the UK DRI website. That's ukdri.ac.uk. Thank you. Thank you.